So let's start with the game that I think we uh, internalize more and that uh, I think... That we I played more than once, that one? Yep, and that I think we will want to own. If you don't buy it, I'll buy it, because... Oh, if- Matt, it, this was actually... So this is in first look at PAX East, and it was actually our friend Matt's copy that was in the first look, not PAX's copy. The game is called No Return as, as Gift Kind, kind Zurück. If I don't know how to pronounce that German, but I do know that the 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 it translates to there is no turning back, right? Uh, and the game designer is Marco Teubner, uh, and basically there is no turning back is exactly what this game is about. You know, we've played tons of board games out there that have some sort of dual currency system, right? Where the way to win the game is to get victory points, but there's also this other currency like money, right? So in St. Petersburg, it's very literal. There's victory points and there's coins. Yep. In uh, Puerto Rico, there's doubloons and victory points. Yep. A doubloon um, in round two is worth way more than a doubloon in round eight. Right. Uh, in Race of the Galaxy, which is similar to Puerto Rico, it's a little more abstract than that, right? Yep. In Agricola, it's a little bit more abstract, right? But there are some resources in the game of Agricola that are worth less points and some that are worth more points, but the ones that are worth less points can be used to purchase things that get you points. Right? So like, so like if, you, pre- if you play Dominion, there's, it's a, got a really good example because early in the game, you're trying to get money, you're getting some, you're like to have more buying power, you're getting powers, but none of those things actually win the game for you. What wins the game for you are those green cards that don't do anything usually. Right. Exactly. So, so no return. Dutchie panic time happens right. when people realize the game's ending and they get as many green cards as they can. All right. So the, the implicit idea in all of those games is that you have to decide at some point in the game, obviously in the early game, you're not getting the victory points. You're in the early game, you can't get the victory points. You're getting all these other things to build a machine to get the victory points. And it's sort of a gradual gray line. You can get some victory points early right? You can also maybe get some big money late and you can sort of transition slowly from focusing on one to the other as the game goes and sort of feel your way through, right? And then at the Dutchie panic time, hard shift into victory point only mode. Yep. No, no return is a game that is pretty much taking that game mechanic, making it explicit and focusing on it to the exclusion of all else. Yep. So every, you're just going around and every turn you're basically like, do I continue to do the A phase or do I say fuck it and go to the B phase? Right. You literally, on your turn, you're, everyone starts in phase A. In phase A, what you're doing is adding, you're taking tiles and building up a pool of points, right, that you could score, right? So, and then at the beginning of any of your turns, you can say, you know what? I am switching to phase B. And of course, in the name of the game, there's no turning back, right? Uh, and as soon as you're in phase B, you can no longer increase your point pool. Your maximum score has been set, but you are using the rest of the game in order to take that pool of points and actually convert it into points. <laughs> All right. So if you were to switch into phase B too early, you would end up converting all your potential points into points and you're, you would end up, the game would continue going with extra turns because you switched too early. And now you're not, your, your score is not going to be as high as it could have been had you switched a turn later and had a bigger pool. If you switch too late, what will end up happening is you have a big pool of points that's full of so many points, and you can't convert them all. And then the game ends with some of your points are unconverted. And even and worse, your, unconverted points are negative points. Unconverted points are negative. So literally the entire game is decide exactly the right moment of switching from increase your point pool to choose to start eating up your point pool and converting it into actual points. Right? So the same as many, many other board games, only just that one mechanic, you know, just it's, super, super polished one thing so and one thing only. And yeah. if you play it with people who are canny at games and who recognize this game for what it is, it feels like a high stakes poker game. Like everyone's playing real carefully Everyone's looking at each other, and then suddenly someone's like, phase V, and then, oh, shit. Right, if you think of a normal board game that has a lot of different things going on, right, like a typical Euro game is like maybe, you know, like a chocolate chip cookie, right? This is literally just a chocolate chip. This game, right? <laughs> it's, it's all, like it's, it's, all it's just one ingredient, and they made that ingredient digestible in its pure uncooked form. It's just eating the insides of Oreos. It's just eating the marshmallows from Lucky Charms and not eating the rest of that poison. Yep. 
so yeah, if you you know the game is quick, it's made, it's just a bunch of tiles in a in a in a in a bag basically. Yep, they it's could be real- cards. Like this could be a card game just fine. Uh, I think the tiles make it easy. I guess it could be a card. I mean, technically any game could be a card game because a card is the most uh, powerful physical game component. I defy you to make Maria a card game. You could make you could theor- you couldn't make it good, but you could theoretically make any <laughs> any board game out of cards only. No matter right? You can replace dice with cards, you can replace yep. tiles with cards, you can replace pawns with cards, you can replace any any other game component can be replaced with cards. The one that's hardest to replace is maps, unless you literally are just a bunch late. of cards in a, a, <laughs> just oh, the a whole map, bunch. No, the map is just one big card. Yeah, sure. One big card. <laughs> Uh, but the mecha- the actual physical mechanics of the game are pretty good too because they're literally just you're laying out the numbers in these suits of colors and you have to go in order so you'll pl- have this give and take of do I blow my load now or do I wait for more tiles to come into my hand kind of like uh, Lost Cities it's basically exactly Lost Cities the tile playing is, yep. is 100% Lost Cities you go from uh, high to low right um you know, you can't, you got to put the same color in the same stack. You can't go inserting something in the middle of the stack. So yep. if you go 11, 10, 7, well, all your 8s and 9s are worthless now, right? You gave up on trying to find them. And you can uh, see the stacks everyone else is making. That part is... You just, can't see their hand. Nope, but you can see the stacks. So and you do know the odds. So if a bunch of other people are really building big stacks of yellow, then that can inform your decisions in a pretty clear way. Right, and you still need, you know, at the, when, you're, when you switch to phase two, let's say I build a big old yellow stack, like 11, 10, 9, 9, 8, 7, 7, right? It's got a lot of points in it. I need to have in my hand in phase two tiles with very high number values to be able to eat those away. You can't eat up a lot of points unless you have big numbered tiles. So it can actually be dangerous to build a very strong pool even if it doesn't take you very long to build it because it would take you so long to eat it away, you'll be left with like an 11 left on the board. That's a negative 11. That's bad. Yep. Right? Or maybe if you like near the end of phase one when you're getting ready for phase two, if your hand is just full of giant numbers, then other players might expect that they'll be able to eat more of their point total than they possibly could. And you might start phase B early and just go for it and they'll all be left right. holding the bag. You know, or let's like, okay, I'm, I got my yellows, right? And I, I skipped over nine and eight, and then I get them later, and I go, oh, I got, I missed, I could have put them in my pool. It's like, well, no, that's fine. That's 17 points you can now eat away from the pool you did make. Yep. That's not too bad. Just hold, you know, just hold on to them if you can't play them. Or if you see another player really needs something, and if it's a big number, hold on to it. But all your small numbers, you kind of want to, like, I feel like when you want to switch to phase two, it's like you feel it coming. You can just sort of sense it. Like, all right, the games that we've reached the peak. Yep. Play, play out all your small things that you can to get them out of your hand. So that way when you start phase B, you'll have bigger things in your hand and you can have more efficient phase B. Yep. Right? Whereas if, if you start phase B with a bunch of small things, your phase B is going to start with a whimper. Everyone's going to see that you moved to phase B. You're not going to eat away that many points right away. And then who knows what you're going to draw out of the bag. You could be in big trouble. Now, on a more, like, abstract level, one thing I would say to all of you is that this game will, in the end, be a lot like Yahtzee in that if Yahtzee mechanics are in a lot of other games, if you get good at Yahtzee, then you will be good at that part of every other game that has it. If you get good at No Return, you will start to recognize all the No Returns and all the other games you play. Like, if you play this game and get good at it, you will be a god at uh, St. Petersburg. Yeah, yeah, pretty much like I said, there's so many other games that have that mechanic, right, of when do I switch from doing, you know, working on this part of the game to that other part of the game, right? You know, pretty much every Euro game, what, Crown of Amara, Rim's Favorite, uh, even Seven Wonders, right? When do I, I, Seven Wonders, you start out by building up your little resource stack, and then later you're playing greens and blues and red, right? It's like, all right, I don't need more resources anymore. Green, 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 science, 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 right? Yep, Dominion, I'm like, Dutchy, 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 dutchy. Right. So get good at this game, and then you will be able to see the same mechanic in every other game and be good at it as well. Quick to play, quick to teach, satisfying, like half hour tops to play this game, including teaching. 
Yeah, you can learn it. You can, anyone can play it. Accessible to everyone, not just nerds. Super good.